Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India new course uh, on properties of materials which is uh, essentially third part of this nature and properties of materials series and uh, in this course uh, it's a so let me just give you some brief statistics of the course so it's a 20 hour course which means you will have essentially half an hour lecture modules and you will have 40 of them. So, they will constitute total of 20 hour lecturing and uh, my name is Ashish Garg. So, and uh, I am a professor at at department of material science and engineering at IIT Kanpur. There are two TAs which are assigned to this course. So, TAs will uh, handle the course portal and they will respond to any queries that you might have. However, if you need to contact me, you can email me on So, this is my email address in case you need to contact me. So, this course basically is intended for if you are a B.Tech student of metallurgical engineering material science in early stage B.Tech student or if you are a student of mechanical engineering or if, if you are a student of chemical engineering, physics or even chemistry or nano science and engineering various disciplines who want to just uh, get an introductory uh, description of materials properties especially mechanical and electrical properties then this is suitable course for them. So, essentially it is an undergraduate level very preliminary course just giving you a basic introduction of materials properties uh, with regard to uh, their functionality. So, <coughs> let, let me just give you a brief description of the outline of the course. So, in this course we will begin with, so course will it has two major components. So, the first part of the course we will talk about mechanical behavior of materials essentially the mechanical properties and the second part will talk about electrical properties. And this first part will last for nearly uh, 4 weeks. So, this, this is 4 weeks of mechanical properties and then we have 4 weeks of electrical properties. So, coming to mechanical properties, we will begin with our disc, uh, with the notations. So, essentially what are the what are the major notations and then we will talk about uh, the So, notations as well as some background. So, background in terms of differences in behavior of materials and so on and so forth. And then we will talk about elastic properties. So, notations, background and I can also add basic like uh, general mechanical properties that you encounter in various applications. So, you see various applications on day to day basis. So, what is the relevance of mechanical properties to those applications just to give you a brief idea. So, once we do that background stuff after that we will move on to what we call as uh, elastic properties and this elastic properties we will we'll look at basically we will look at the atomic basis of elastic properties. We will look at uh, an isotropy and then we will look at and elasticity. 
So, these are topics that we will cover under elastic properties and uh, so this will generally constitute nearly one week of, of uh, lecturing and after that we will move on to get plastic deformation. We will talk about plastic deformation of materials in this essentially we will talk about uh, how does the plastic deformation happen which means we will introduce the concept of slip which means we, we talk about slip and slip systems and then we also invoke the concept of what we call as resolved shear stress. Okay. And then so this will take roughly week 2 and then we will move on to week 3 where we will talk about plastic deformation and details. So, we will look at deformation mechanisms and uh, deformation mechanisms, we will look at strain hardening we will look at role of dislocations. and uh, failure and then we will also look at the difference between tension and compression. Okay. So, basically what happens when a material is deformed, how does it harden, what is the role of microscopic mechanism of dislocation uh, in, in affecting the deformation, how does it fail and what happens when you, uh, what is the difference between tensile and compressive testing of materials and then once we have done this we so this is deformation mechanisms then we move on to what we call as strengthening mechanisms that using this knowledge of deformation theory uh, how can you make a material strong so strengthening mechanism will basically include effect of uh, cold working and then we will look at solute hardening what happens when you add some element to a material then we will look at precipitation hardening and then we will look at some other mechanisms that might be prevalent. So, this is what basically we will talk about the mechanical properties, we will not deal so much with the failure and fracture aspects of material, we will mostly de deal with the deformation uh, in materials, especially in metals. Okay. So, this is mostly to do with the uh, metals and alloys. So, in, in, in some sense you can say that the mechanical properties uh, module of this course is primarily with mechanical properties of materials and that too essentially the deformation behavior and strengthening mechanisms um, because we do not have enough time to deal with the fracture and fatigue and then we will move on to what we call as electrical properties. So, in electrical properties we will start with metals. So, in metals we will first begin with the Drude theory and then uh, we will do some analysis in terms of a specific heat calculation or a specific heat derivation and then we will look at what is the electrical conductivity of metals uh, more sort of acceptable theories. Once we understand this metals part, we will move on to uh, semiconductors and this requires us to introduce bands. So, we will go to band theory. In the band theory, we will do elementary quantum mechanics. We will not get into details of it, we will just introduce elementary quantum mechanics. And, uh, and then bands energy bands basically these are energy bands okay differences between metals and semiconductors
various types of materials essentially metals, semiconductors and insulators and then we will look at. Uh, um, so, once we have done that we will be able to move on to what we call as semiconductors. And we can look at you know different types of semiconductors. Um, and then transport in semiconductors. And finally, as a last exercise, if the time permits, we will try and do uh, thermal properties. if time permits. So, in this thermal properties we will try and look at uh, stuff like heat capacity, and uh, thermal expansion, and thermal conductivity. So, these are the contents that we are going to follow in this course primarily on mechanical and electrical properties of materials especially metals and semiconductors. Mechanical properties mainly of metals and electrical properties are mainly metals and semiconductors. If time permits we will <laughs> we'll come to thermal properties in the of the course. Now, let me give you some references for the. Uh, so, now let me give you some reference books that I would recommend you to go through. So, first book is uh, materials science and engineering by V Raghavan. Second one I would recommend is again material science and engineering. by W. D. Callister and then uh, more specific and better books I would recommend one is uh, so first one is uh, this uh, H. W. Hayden W. G. Mufat and J. W. Wolf, who have written this uh, marvelous four volume set out of this mechanical behavior volume 3 and the title of the book is essentially the structure and properties of materials. So, basically it is a structure and properties of materials essentially volume 3. It is an excellent book if you can get it I think I would I would strongly recommend you to go through it. And then second one you can read the fourth volume which is L F Lee's R M Rose and J Wolf which is again structure and properties of materials volume 4 and this is electronic properties excellent book. We'll go through these two books uh, for the sake of this course especially the first two are more generic in nature these are more specific in nature. So, uh, these are actually I would say the, the recommended books I would suggest to go through them. And then there is another one which is very nice book especially in terms of thermal properties and electrical properties is uh, uh, A. Guinea and R. Julian the 
solid state. It is again a good book if you can get hold of it, this is a very nice book especially for uh, electrical and uh, thermal properties of, of materials. So, this is what the outline of the course is. Now, let us go through a brief uh, sort of walk through what uh, why do we want to do this course. Now, the reason why we want to do this course is uh, because properties of materials are related to the applications that we see in daily life. For example, when you talk about mechanical properties. So, we have variety of applications around us. For example, if you look at something called a bridge, the bridge on which we walk, vehicles pass through every day and bridge has to be. So, and so what must bridge, what must not happen with the bridge? Well, the bridge must not deform. Bridge must not fail. which means it must be strong, which it must not plastically deform essentially and it must not and it must not fail which means it must be fatigue and failure resistant. Fatigue meaning because there is a continuous variable loading. Uh, which means sometimes the load is high, sometimes the load is low, sometimes and load is of varying nature as a result, which is called as cyclic loading and as a result this is called as fatigue uh, uh, loading and then failure because of shocks, uh, it might uh, impact loading is also there. So, both cyclic as well as impact loading are there that is why we talk about fatigue and failure. So, what it must have basically it is going to be defined by properties such as it must have high strength. And in, in and in, in case of strength, generally we talk about tensile strength or yield strength. And we'll see what these terms are as we uh, as we as we go through the course. So these are certain terms. Similarly, when we talk about these failure properties, we are talking about fatigue and fracture. So we're talking about fatigue limit. When you talk about fracture limit or failure limit. Now, fatigue and fracture we are not going to discuss in this course, so we will keep them out of it, but basically they are fatigue is because of cyclic loading and fracture could be because of impact loading. Essentially, it is a sudden failure. So, these are uh, basically because of, but what is very important is the strength that a bridge must be strong. Similarly, for example, when you look at ship, a ship navigates in sea. Sea could be warm or cold. If it is Indian Ocean, it could be warm. If it is North Sea or Atlantic, it may be cold. Now, a ship the material which is used to build ship must be corrosion resistant of course, because it must not corrode in the saline water, but at the same time it must be strong because it undergoes collisions with icebergs and other things. So, it must have high strength and also ships are heavy, they have to carry lot of loads, it must have high strength. At the same time it must also be fracture resistant, especially at lower temperatures such as when it goes to uh, North Sea or Atlantic, you must have seen the movie Titanic where Titanic uh, underwent the fracture because of lower temperatures. So, it must be fracture resistant. So, it must have high strength for these applications as well as high fracture resistance. So, this is the importance of mechanical uh, properties in these applications. Now, coming to coming closer, now you can see within your body itself we have bone. Okay. Now, bone, if you look at the bone, hand bone or, or, or your leg bone, the bone must be, it must not be very heavy, so it must be light, okay? but at the same time it must be stiff, the bone must not deform, which means it must have what we call as it must not 
deform by which it we mean is that it must have high yield strength. There is a term called as yielding, yield means give way okay, that or buckle, it must not buckle, it must not plastically deform, it should, it should remain, uh, it, should, it should retain its shape. So, it must be stiff, it must not, it must not deform, it must not easily deform and so we will see what yield strength is. Similarly, bone must be strong, bone must not also easily fracture. Now, if you look at teeth, teeth must also be strong. So, we have a lot of these advertisements from Colgate and stuff like that, they say strong teeth, basically by strong teeth we mean the teeth must not deform while we are chewing the food or bi biting anything. Similarly, they must be also hard, only because they are hard and wear resistant, you can bite and chew things. Now, if you look at things like uh, rail tracks, rail tracks must be strong, they should not deform. Okay. which means they must have high strength. So, basically here we are talking about high strength and we will see what kind of strength do we mean. Rail, rail track should not plastically deform which means they must have high yield strength. They should, so we can say high yield strength. They should also not, should not wear, wear out which means they must be hard and we are resistant on surface, but they should also be fatigue resistant because rail tracks also go cyclic and impact loading as a result fatigue and fracture resistant resistance is important. So, they have to have high yield strength, they should have high hardness and high wear resistance, but at the same time they should also have high fracture resistance and high uh, fatigue resistance and some of these properties can be quite contradictory or quite uh, uh, counterproductive to each other. As a result, we have to balance out uh, these, uh, these properties in a given material. So, these are certain examples which demonstrate what kind of properties, mechanical properties we are expecting in uh, different materials. So, in, 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 in this course, we are mostly dealing with what we call as basically strength. So, we are, we are talking about the strength of material, strength of material is basically a measure of how strong a material is and essentially it is also a, a manifestation of bond strength. So, to know about the bond strength, you need to do course number 1, which is on structure of materials. So, that is where we talked about the structure of materials, nature and properties of materials part 1. So, what is this, this strength of material? So, basically what happens is that when we when we deform any material, so let us say when you apply load to a material, okay, let us say you have you have a beam, all right. This beam is of length L. When then when you apply the load to this material, let us say you apply a load P this beam will get elongated a little bit and its area will cross sectional area will reduce. So, this is so the black one is uh, it has a length L naught and it has an area which is let us say cross sectional area is A naught that is before the deformation. So, L naught a naught is before the deformation. Okay. Once you apply the load, 
it takes a length L f and area. So, it will have an area A f and length L f. So, this L f and A f are the after application of of load. So, coming to a few terms, a material is elastic when L f goes back to L naught and A f goes back to A naught after removal of load. So, you might have seen that in clothes we use this elastic okay? and you can see that when you stretch them they stretch longer when you apply load for example, rubber or any other polymer and when you release the load they get back to proper uh, their initial dimensions. So, basically a elastic material will be material gets back to its original shape. after removal of load. So, this is what is elastic behavior. Okay? So, when you release the load the material will. So, so, this is you can say this will go back to this after removal of load. Okay? Now, what happens when you when the material does not uh, so you might have other situation in which you have this beam with length L naught, area A naught and you apply the load such that it becomes longer and thinner. So, this is L f and this is a cross sectional area A f. Now, after removal of and we apply a load P, okay. after removal of load A f does not go back to A naught and L f does not go back to L naught, which means final dimensions dimensions are not the same as initial after removal of load. This is called as what we call as a plastic behavior material has undergone what we call as a plastic deformation. Plastic means it has gone some deformation in it. So, there will be some initial deformation which is elastic in nature, but beyond that it has gone a deformation which is called as plastic or we can say a permanent deformation. Okay. So, material does not come back to its original dimension, its size it changes. As a, and it does not get back to its original one upon removal of load. So, these are some basic concepts that we have introduced in this lecture. We will get into details of these concepts more in the next lecture. So, we will stop here and we will continue this in the next lecture. Thank you.